Welcome back to another spooky bedtime story, Halloween-y bedtime story. This time I'm going to be reading Attack of the Jack-O-Lanterns by R.L. Stein in a Goosebumps book, number 48. Where are you going, elf? Dad called me from the den. Don't call me elf, I shouted back. My name is Drew. Dad thinks it's real cute to call me elf, but I hate it. He calls me elf because I'm tiny for a 12 year old and I have short straight black hair and a sort of pointy chin and a pointy little nose. If you look like an elf, would you want people calling you elf? Of course not. One day my best friend Walker Parks heard my dad call me elf, so Walker tried it. What's up elf? Walker said. I stomped on Walker's foot as hard as I could and he never called me that again. Where are you going? Drew. Dad called from the den. Out, I told him and slammed the front door behind me. I like to keep my parents guessing. I never try to give them a straight answer. You might say I'm as mischievous as an elf, but if you said it, I'd stomp on your foot too. I'm tough. Ask anyone. They'll tell you that Drew Brockman is tough. When you're the shrimpiest girl in your class, you've got to be tough. Actually, I wasn't going anywhere. I was waiting for my friends to come to my house. I walked down to the street to watch for them. I took a deep breath. The people in the corner house had a fire going in their fireplace. The white smoke floated out from their chimney. It smelled so sweet and piney. I love autumn. It means Halloween is on the way. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I guess I like it so much because it gives me a chance to look like someone else. Or something else. It's the one night of the year that I don't have to look like pointy-chinned me. But I have a problem with Halloween. Two kids in my class are the problem. Tabitha Weiss and Lee Winston. For the past two years, Tabby and Lee have totally ruined Halloween for Walker and me. I'm so angry about it. Walker is angry too. Our favorite holiday, ruined, because of two stuck-up kids who think they can do whatever they want. Just thinking about it makes me want to punch someone. My other friends, Shane and Shanna Martin, are upset about it too. Shane and Shanna are brother and sister, twins my age. They live in the house next door and we hang out a lot. Shane and Shanna don't look like anyone else I know. They both have very round faces with curly ringlets of blonde hair. They have red cheeks and teary smiles and they're both short and kind of chunky. My dad says they're roly-poly. Dad always thinks of something icky to say about everyone. Anyway, the twins are as angry as Walker and me about Tabby and Lee, and this Halloween we're going to do something about it. Only we don't know what we're going to do. That's why they're coming over to my house, to discuss it. How did the Tabby and Lee problem start? Well, I have to go back two years to explain it to you. I remember it so clearly. Walker and I were ten, and we were just hanging out in front of my house. Walker had his bike on its side and was doing something to the spokes on one wheel. It was a beautiful autumn day. Down the block, someone was burning a big pile of leaves. It's against the law here in Riverdale. My dad always threatens to call the police when someone burns leaves, but I love the smell. Walker was fiddling with his bike, and I was watching him. I forget what we were talking about, but I glanced up, and there stood Tabby and Lee. Tabby looked as perfect as always. Little Miss Perfect, that's what Dad calls her, and for once, he's right. The wind was blowing pretty hard, but her long, straight blonde hair stayed in place. It didn't fly out all over the red like mine did. Tabby has perfect creamy white skin and perfect green eyes that sparkle a lot. She's very pretty and she knows it. Sometimes it takes all my strength not to shake both hands in her hair and mess it all up. Lee is tall and good looking with dark brown eyes and a great warm smile. Lee is African American and he sort of struts when he walks and acts real cool like the rappers on MTV videos. The girls at school all think he's terrific, but I can never understand a word he says. That's because he always has a huge wad of green apple bubblegum in his mouth. Nom, nom. Lee stared down at Walker's bike and mumbled something. Hey, I said. What's up, guys? Tabby made a disgusted face and pointed a finger at me. Drew, you have something hanging from your nose, she said. Oh, I shot my hand up and rubbed the bottom of my nose. Nothing there. Sorry, Tabby snickered. It doesn't even look like he did. Tabby and Lee both laughed. Tabby's always playing mean jokes like that on me. She knows I'm self-conscious about my looks, so I always fall for her dumb tricks. Nice bike, Lee mumbled to Walker. How many speeds? It's a 12 speed, Walker told him. Lee sneered. Mine is a 42 speed. Huh? Walker jumped to his feet. There's no such thing as a 42 speed, he cried. Mine is, Lee insisted, still sneering. It's specially made. He blew a big green bubblegum bubble. 
That's hard to do when you're sneering. I wanted to pop it all over his smug face, but he stepped back and popped it himself. Did you get a haircut? Tabby asked me, studying my windblown hair. No, I replied. I didn't think so, she said. She smoothed her perfect hair back with one hand. Grrr. I couldn't help it. I balled my hands into fists and let out an angry growl. I growl a lot. Sometimes I don't even know I'm doing it. Lee said something. Bubblegum juice ran down his chin. Excuse me, I asked. I'm having a Halloween party, he repeated. My heart started to pound. A real Halloween party, I demanded, with everyone in costume and hot apple cider and games and bombing for apples and scary stories. Lee nodded. Yes, a real Halloween party at my house on Halloween night. You guys want to come? Sure, Walker and I replied. Big mistake. Real big mistake. The Halloween party was already crowded with kids from school when Walker and I showed up. Lee's parents had orange and black streamers strung up all over the living room. Three huge jack-o'-lanterns grinned at us from the window seat by the front window. Now, of course, Tabby was the first person I ran into. Even in costume, she wasn't hard to recognize. She was dressed as a princess. Perfect. She wore a frilly pink princess-type gown with long, puffy sleeves and a high, lacy collar. And she had her blonde hair pinned up in a sparkly rhinestone tiara. She smiled, her lips stick to lips at me. Is that you, Drew? She said, pretending she didn't recognize me. What are you supposed to be? A mouse? No, I protested. I'm not a mouse. I'm a Klingon. Don't you ever watch Star Trek? Tabby snickered. Are you sure you're not a mouse? She turned and walked away. She had a pleased smile on her face. She gets such a thrill from insulting me. I growled under my breath and searched for someone else to talk to. I found Shane and Shauna in front of the fireplace. The twins were easy to recognize. They were both big, puffy, white snowmen. Excellent costumes, I greeted them. They wore two white snowballs, one big snowball over their bodies, a smaller snowball over their heads. The snowman faces had eye holes cut in them, but I couldn't tell Shane from Shauna. What's the snow made out of? I asked. Styrofoam, Shauna answered. She has a high, squeaky voice. So now I knew who was who. We carved them out of the big blocks of it. Cool, I said. Great party, huh? Shane chimed in. Everyone from our class is here. Did you see Brenna Morse's costume? She spray painted her whole body with silver spray paint. Her hair and face, too. What's she supposed to be? I demanded, searching the crowd for her. Silver Surfer? No, I think the Statue of Liberty, Shane replied. She was carrying a plastic torch. A loud crackle in the fireplace made me jump. Most of the lights were off, giving the room a dark Halloween mood. The fire made long shadows dance over the floor. I turned and saw Walker making his way to us. His entire body was wrapped in bandages and gauze. He was a mummy. I'm in trouble, he announced. What's your problem, Shane asked. My mom did a terrible wrapping job, Walker complained. I'm coming unraveled. He struggled to retie the loose bandages around his neck. Ah, he let out an angry cry. The whole thing is coming undone. Are you wearing clothes underneath? Shauna asked. Shane and I laughed. I pictured Walker huddled in the middle of the party in his underwear, piles of bandages at his feet. Yes, I've got my clothes on underneath the costume, Walker replied, but if these bandages all come undone, I'll fall on my face. Hey, what's up? Lee interrupted. He wore a Batman costume, but I recognized his dark eyes under the mask, and I recognized his voice. Awesome party, Shana said. Yeah, awesome, I repeated. Lee started to reply, but a thunderous crash made everyone gasp. We all froze. What was that? Lee cried. The crowded room grew silent. I heard another crash. Bumping sounds. Low voices. It's... It's coming from the basement, Lee stammered. He pulled off the Batman mask. His bushy hair fell over his face, but I could still see his frightened expression. We all turned to the open doorway at the far end of the living room. Beyond the doorway, stairs led down to Lee's basement. Oh, gasped Lee as we heard another crash. Then heavy footsteps up the basement stairs. Someone is in the house, Lee shrieked in terror. Someone has broken in. Mom! Dad! Lee cried. His voice rang out shrilly in the silent living room. The rest of us had all frozen in place. A shiver ran down my back as I listened to the heavy footsteps treading up the stairs. Mom! Dad! Help! Lee called again, his eyes bulging with fear. No reply. He took off toward their bedroom at the back of the house. Mom? Dad? I started to run after him, but he returned to the living room a few seconds later, his whole body trembling. My parents! They're gone! Call the police! Someone shouted. Yes, call 911! Walker screamed. Lee hurtled to the phone beside the couch. His foot kicked over a can of Pepsi on the rug, but he didn't notice. He grabbed the phone receiver and jammed it to his ear. I saw him push the emergency number. 
But then he turned to us and let the phone fall from his hand. It's dead. The line is dead. Some kids gasped. A few cried out. I turned to Walker and opened my mouth to speak, but before I could get a sound out, two bulky figures burst out from the basement doorway. No! Lee let out a horrified howl. Tabby stepped up and huddled close beside him. Her heavily made up eyes were wide with fright. She grabbed Lee's arm. The two intruders moved quickly into the living room entrance and blocked the doorway. One of them had a blue wool ski mask pulled down over his face. The other wore a rubber gorilla mask. They both wore black leather jackets with black jeans. Party time, the gorilla shouted in a gruff voice. He laughed, a cruel laugh. Party time, everyone. Several kids cried out. My heart started to pound in my chest. I suddenly felt hot and cold at the same time. Who are you? Lee demanded over the frightened cries of some kids. How did you get in? Where are my parents? Parents, the guy in the ski mask replied. He had bright blue eyes, almost as blue as the wool mask that covered his face. Do you have parents? They both laughed. Where are they? Lee cried. I think they ran away when they saw us coming, the guy said through the ski mask. Lee swallowed hard. A tiny gulping sound escaped his throat. Tabby stepped in front of him. You can't come in here, she shouted angrily at the two intruders. We're having a party. The gorilla turned to his partner and laughed. They both laughed loudly, tossing back their heads. It's our party now, the gorilla announced. We're taking over. Hushed gasps ran around the room. My legs suddenly felt rubbery and weak. I grabbed Walker's shoulder to keep from collapsing. What? What are you going to do? Tabby demanded. Everybody down on the floor, the guy in the ski mask ordered. You can't do this, Tabby screamed. We're just kids, someone else cried. Are you going to rob us? We don't have any money. I saw Shane and Shauna huddled together by the fireplace. Their faces were hidden by their snowman costumes, but I knew they must be terrified too. Down on the floor, both intruders screamed. The room echoed with heavy thuds and the rustle of costumes as we all obediently dropped to the floor. You too, the gorilla screamed at Shane and Shauna. It's impossible. How can we get down in these big snowballs? Shauna cried. Get down on the floor anyway, the gorilla ordered nastily. Get down, or we'll push you down, the ski mask guy threatened. I watched Shane and Shauna struggle to lower themselves to the floor. They had to pull off their bottom snowballs to get onto their knees. Shauna's snowball broke in half as she worked to pull it off. Okay, push-ups, everybody, the gorilla ordered. Huh? Confused cries rose up through the room. Push-ups, the gorilla repeated. You all know how to do push-ups, right? How how many do we have to do? Walker asked. He knelt close beside me on the rug in front of the coffee table. Do them for a couple of hours, the ski mask guy replied. Hours? Several kids cried out. A few hours of push-ups will get you all warmed up, the gorilla said. Then we'll think of something harder for you to do. Yeah, much harder, his partner added. And they both burst out laughing again. You can't do this, I screamed. My voice came out high and tiny like a mouse voice. Other kids protested, too. I turned to the door. The guy in the ski mask had moved into the living room, but the gorilla was still blocking any escape. Get started, the gorilla ordered. We'll make it three hours, his partner added. I heard a lot of groans and complaints, but we all dropped onto our stomachs and started doing push-ups. What choice did we have? We can't do this for two hours, Walker protested breathlessly. We'll faint. He raised and dropped, raised and dropped, close beside me on the floor. His mummy costume was unraveling with each move he made. Faster, the gorilla ordered. Come on, speed it up. I had done only four or five push-ups and my arms already started to ache. I don't get much exercise except for bike riding and swimming in the summer, and there was no way I'd last for more than ten to fifteen minutes. I raised my eyes to the front of the room and saw a sight that made me cry out in shock. Walker, look, I whispered. Huh? He groaned. I poked Walker in the side. He lost his balance and hit the floor. Hey, Drew, what's your problem? He groaned. We both turned our eyes to the doorway and saw to our surprise that Tabby and Lee weren't down on the floor with the rest of us. They had joined the two intruders in front of the doorway, and they both had wide, gleeful grins on their faces. I stopped the push-ups and raised myself to my knees. I saw Lee start to laugh. Tabby joined him. She laughed so hard her tiara shook. They slapped each other a high five. All around me on the floor, some kids were still working away, pushing themselves up and down, up and down, up and down, groaning and grunting as they obediently did their push-ups. But Walker and I had stopped. We were both on our knees watching Tabby and Lee. The two creeps were laughing and celebrating. I was about to cry out in anger when the two intruders tugged off their masks. I instantly recognized the boy with the gorilla mask. He was Todd Jeffrey, a high school kid who lives next door to Lee. I knew the ski mask kid, too. His name was Joe something or other. He's a friend of Todd's. 
Todd brushed his cockery hair back off his forehead. His hair was wet, his face was red, and he was sweating. I guess it was hot inside that mask. Joe tossed his ski mask to the floor. He shook his head, laughing at us. All a joke, guys, he called out. Happy Halloween! All the other kids had stopped the push-ups, but no one had moved from the floor. I guess we were too shocked to stand up. Just a party joke, Lee chimed in, grinning. Did we scare you? Tabby asked coyly. Ugh. I let out the loudest growl I ever growled. I wanted to leap up, grab the tiara off Princess Tabby's head, and wrap it around her neck. Todd and Joe slapped each other a high five. They picked up the cans of Pepsi and tilted them up over their mouths. You can get up now, Lee announced, snickering. Wow, you guys looked so scared, Tabby cried gleefully. I guess we really fooled you. I don't believe this, Walker muttered, shaking his head. The wrapping had fallen from his face. Bandages drooped loosely over his shoulders. I really don't believe this. What a mean, rotten joke. I climbed up shakily and helped Walker to his feet. I heard Shane and Shauna grumbling behind us. Their costumes were totally wrecked. Kids were grumbling and complaining. Tabby and Lee were the only ones laughing. No one else thought the joke was the least bit funny. I started across the room to tell the two creeps what I thought of their dumb joke, but Lee's parents burst into the room, pulling off their coats. We went next door to the Jeffreys, Lee's mom announced. Then she saw Todd. Oh, hi, Todd. We were just at your house, visiting your parents. What are you doing over here? Helping Lee out with the party? Kind of, Todd replied, grinning. How's the party going? Lee's dad asked. Great, Lee told him. Just great, Dad. And that's how Tabby and Lee ruined Halloween two years ago. Walker and I, and Shane and Shauna, too, were all really upset. No, we were more than upset. We were furious. Halloween is our favorite holiday, and we don't like to see it ruined because of mean practical jokes. So last year, we decided to get even. We need special decorations, Shauna said, not the same old pumpkins and skeletons. Yeah, something scarier, Shane chimed in. I think jack-o'-lanterns are plenty scary, I insisted, especially when you put candles in them, and their dark faces light up with those jagged evil grins. Jack-o'-lanterns are babyish, Walker argued. No one is afraid of jack-o'-lanterns. Shauna is right. If we're going to scare Tabby and Lee, we need something better. It was a week before Halloween. The four of us were hard at work at my house. We were working on my Halloween party. Yes. Last year, the party was at my house. Why did I decide to have the party? For only one reason. For revenge. For revenge on Tabby and Lee. Walker, Shane, Shauna, and I had, had spent the entire year talking about it, dreaming up plans, dreaming up the most frightening scares we could imagine. We didn't want to pull a mean joke like having people break into the house. That was too mean and too frightening. Some of my friends still have bad dreams about guys in ski masks and gorilla masks. The four of us didn't want to terrify all of our guests, we just wanted to embarrass Tabby and Lee and scare them out of their skins. Now, a week before the big night, we were sitting around my tiny living room after dinner. We should have been doing homework, but Halloween was too near. We had no time for homework. We had to spend all of our time making evil plans. Shane and Shauna had a lot of really frightening ideas. They both looked so sweet and innocent, but once you get to know them, they're pretty weird. Walker and I wanted to keep our scares simple. The simpler, the scarier. That's what we thought. I wanted to drop fake cobwebs all over Tabby and Lee from the stairway. I know a store that sells really sticky, scratchy spider webs. Walker has a tarantula that he keeps in a glass cage in his room. A live tarantula? He thought maybe we could tangle the tarantula in the cobwebs and then drop it in Tabby's hair. Not a bad idea. Walker also wanted to cut a trap door in the living room floor. When Tabby and Lee stepped on the spot, we'd open the trap door and it would disappear into the basement. I had to reject that idea. I liked it, but I wasn't sure how mom and dad would react when they discovered us sawing up the floor. Also, I just wanted to terrify the two creeps. I didn't want to break their necks. Where are we going to put the fake blood puddles? Shane asked. He held a red plastic puddle of blood in each hand. He and his sister had bought a dozen fake blood puddles at a costume store. They came in different sizes and looked very real. Don't forget the green slime, Shauna reminded us. She had three plastic bags of slime beside her. Walker and I opened one of the bags and felt the slimy, sticky, oozy gunk. Where did you buy this? I asked at the same store. No, it came out of Shauna's nose, Shane joked. With an angry cry, Shauna hoisted up one of the bags. She swung it in front of her, threatened to smack her brother with it. He laughed and it just bounced off the couch. Whoa, careful, I cried. If that bag breaks, maybe we can hang the slime from the ceiling, Walker suggested. Yeah, cool, Shane cried excitedly, and it could drip down onto Tabby and Lee. Maybe we could cover them in it, Walker added excitedly, and they'd look like two sticky green blobs. Glub, 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 glub. Shauna thrashed out her arms and pretended she was drowning under a puddle of slime. Will it stick to the ceiling, I asked? How will we keep it up there long enough? How will we get the two of them to stand under it? I'm the practical one of the group. They have a lot of wild ideas, but they never know how to make them work. That's my job. I'm not sure, Walker replied. He jumped up from his chair. I'm going to get something to drink. 
What if the slime starts to spew out of the jack o' lantern? Shane suggested. That'd be kind of scary, wouldn't it? What if we had fake blood gush out of the jack o' lantern? Shauna said. That would be even scarier. We have to trap Tabby and Lee somehow, Shane suggested, thinking hard. All this slime and cobwebs and blood is good, but we have to make them think they're really in danger. We have to make them think that something terrible is going to happen to them. I started to agree, but the lights went out. Oh, I uttered a cry of surprise, blinking in the sudden darkness. What happened? Shane and Shauna didn't reply. The curtains were drawn, so no light entered the living room from outside. The room was so dark I couldn't see my two friends sitting right across from me. And then I heard a dry, whispered voice. A frightening whisper, so close, so close to my ear. Come with me. Come home with me now. Come home to where you belong. Come home to the grave. Staring into the darkness, the whispered words sent a shiver down my back. Excellent, I cried, and the lights flashed back on. Across from me, Shane and Shauna clapped and cheered. Good job, Walker. I turned to congratulate him. He set his portable tape player on the coffee table in front of us and rewound the tape. I think that'll scare them, he said. Scared me, I told him, and I knew what it was. When the lights go out and the voice starts to whisper, it will creep everyone out, Shauna exclaimed, especially with the tape right under the couch. Who recorded the voice, Shane asked Walker. Did you do it? Walker nodded. Shane said. He turned to me. But Drew, I still think you should let Shauna and me do some of our scares on Tabby and Lee. Let's save those for when we really need them, I replied. I bent down and opened one of the plastic bags. I dug a hand in and pulled out a big chunk of green slime. It felt cold and gooey in my hand. I worked it around in my palm, squeezing it and shaping it, and I rolled it into a ball. Think it's sticky enough to hang from the ceiling, I asked. It would be a nice effect to have it running down the walls, I think. No, I've got a better idea, Walker interrupted. The lights all go out, right? And the creepy voice starts to whisper. And when it whispers their names, when it whispers, Come to your grave, Tabby and Lee, then someone sneaks up behind each of them and drops a huge glob of slime on their heads. That's cool, Shane declared, and we all laughed and cheered. We had some good ideas, but we needed more. I didn't want to slip up. I didn't want Tabby and Lee to think it was funny or all a big joke. I wanted them to be scared. With a capital S C A R E D. So we thought more of the scary ideas and more ideas. We worked all week, from after school until late at night, setting traps, hiding little creepy surprises all over the living room. We carved the ugliest jack o' lanterns you ever saw, and we filled them with real looking plastic cockroaches. We made an eight-foot-tall papier-mâché monster, and we rigged it to fall out of the coat closet when we pulled a string. We bought real-looking rubber snakes and worms and spiders and hid them all around the house. We didn't eat or sleep. We dragged ourselves through school, thinking only about more ways to terrify our two special guests. Finally, Halloween arrived. The four of us gathered at my house. We were too tense to sit still or even stand still. We moved around the house, barely speaking to each other and we carefully checked and rechecked all of the frightening traps and tricks we had prepared. I had never worked so hard in all my life. Never. I spent so much time getting ready for the party and our revenge that I didn't even think of my Halloween costume until the very last minute. And so I ended up wearing the same Klingon costume I had worn the year before. Walker was a pirate that year. He had a patch over one eye and wore a striped shirt and a parrot on one shoulder. Shane and Shauna had dressed as some kind of blobby creatures. I couldn't really tell what they were supposed to be. We didn't care about our costumes, so we only cared about scaring Tabby and Lee. And then, as we paced the living room nervously, one hour before the party was to start, the phone rang, and we received a call that filled us all with horror. 